Good morning and welcome to worship on this feast day of the transfiguration of our Lord, the last Sunday after the Epiphany. Each Sunday morning, we have in-person services of Holy Communion at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. This Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we will have three worship opportunities, services of imposition of ashes and Holy Communion at 12.10 p.m., 5.30 p.m., and 7 p.m. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship during the prelude.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my Son, my Chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Memphis, Tennessee. April 3rd, 1968. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke at a rally in support of striking sanitation workers. His speech that night began with a reflection about what it might be like to stand at the beginning of time with a panoramic view of the whole of human history up to the present, and be asked by God, which age would you like to live in? King then touched on some of the highlights in the biblical story and world history, from the people of Israel's liberation from Egypt to Plato, to Aristotle, to Socrates, to to Martin Luther posting the 95 Theses, to Abraham Lincoln signing the Emancipation Proclamation. King went on to state that he would want to live in the age in which he had been placed in the second half of the 20th century with its struggle to secure civil rights and economic justice for all people, taking note of the volatile times in which he was living, he concluded his speech with these words, we've got some difficult days ahead, but it doesn't matter with me now, because I've been to the mountaintop, and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, 
But I want you to know tonight that we, as a people, will get to the promised land. And I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I have been to the mountaintop could well be the theme of our gospel reading on this feast day of the transfiguration of our Lord. The image of the mountaintop runs through the scriptures as a symbolic place where humans can catch a glimpse of the divine and ultimate truth. Call it a mountaintop experience or a God sighting or a thin place Such experiences can happen in many different places and ways, from worship to working at the soup kitchen to building a habitat house, from the beach to the mountains, from music to art to literature. Such is the essence of the artistic scene painted by our gospel reading today on this last Sunday after the Epiphany. It is a strange, haunting parable, a mountaintop setting, appearances that morph, apparitions of long-dead people, surreal conversations, an overshadowing cloud, terror-filled bystanders, a disembodied voice speaking from a cloud, and tongue-tied witnesses. Hollywood, here we come. It's interesting to note that of the three gospel accounts of the transfiguration, only in the gospel according to Luke does it say that Jesus of Nazareth went up on the mountain to pray. Perhaps in that we find a clue about what sense to make of this text and this day. God is at work to transform, to transfigure our world. Called and set apart in holy baptism to be God's partners in that enterprise, we certainly have plenty to do. However, First, we must allow ourselves to be, to be still, to pay attention, to listen. That is the word of command in today's gospel to an overachieving Simon Peter who feels that something must be done on the mountaintop, that three dwellings must be built if the experience is to be captured. Instead, a divine voice says to Simon Peter, and by extension to us, listen. Our Lord wants disciples to whom the glory of God can be revealed. Disciples who will listen. Disciples who, as St. Paul put it, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. The God of love, who reveals God's self to us in Jesus the Christ and transfigures us with that love, may remain beyond our vision if we fail to suspend our human agendas, our busyness, our dwelling building, in order to stop, to pay attention, and to listen to our Lord. One very important way we can pay attention and listen to God is through the discipline of prayer. Several years ago, in one of our adult Christian education classes, we explored these words from the Quaker theologian and author, Richard Foster. The heart of God is an open wound of love. 
He aches over our distance and preoccupation. He mourns that we do not draw near to him. He grieves that we have forgotten him. He weeps over our obsession with muchness and manyness. He longs for our presence. God is inviting you and me to come home, to come home to where we belong, to come home to that for which we were created. His arms are stretched out wide to receive us. His heart is enlarged to take us in. For too long, we have been in a far country, a country of noise and hurry and crowds, a country of climb and push and shove, a country of frustration and fear and intimidation. And he welcomes us home, home to serenity and peace and joy, home to friendship and fellowship and openness, home to intimacy and acceptance and affirmation. We do not need to be shy. He invites us into the living room of his heart where we can put on old slippers and share freely. He invites us into the kitchen of his friendship where chatter and batter mix in good fun. He invites us into the dining room of his strength where we can feast to our heart's delight. He invites us into the study of his wisdom where we can learn and grow and stretch and ask all the questions we want. He invites us into the workshop of his creativity where we can be co-laborers with him, working together to determine the outcome of events. He invites us into the bedroom of his rest where new peace is found and where we can be naked and vulnerable and free. It is also the place of deepest intimacy where we know and are known to the fullest. The key to this home, this heart of God, is prayer. Jesus of Nazareth went to the mountaintop to pray to commune with God in preparation for his journey to Jerusalem and the fate that most likely and in fact did await him there, execution on a Roman cross. Martin Luther King Jr., also a man of prayer, spoke of his mountaintop experience, that his eyes had seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. The very next day, April 4th, King was assassinated on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. Today, on the threshold of Ash Wednesday and another Lenten season, another Lenten journey, our risen Lord meets us here in the Word of God and in prayer, calling us beyond the limits of the busyness of our world to a place of stillness and surrender and prayer where God can heal our world one anxious, alienated heart at a time. Our lives need to be grounded and centered in the relationship God seeks to establish with us. It may be a mountaintop experience. It may be an experience in the challenging valleys of life. It may be in the ordinary flow of daily life. However, not listening robs our lives of that richness of relationship that pulses through the whole universe, creating new growth within us, calling us home 
to the loving God in whom we live and move and have our being. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. Lord, in your mercy. The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape, bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. Lord, in your mercy. You love justice and establish equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community nonprofits, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Help us build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Heal those who are in distress. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace in our world, especially in Ukraine. Kindle in the hearts of all your children the love of peace and guide with your wisdom the leaders of nations. Lord, in your mercy. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of season. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are they who listen to the voice of the Christ in this life and now rest with him. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we do not lose heart. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Our service now begins. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.